Hey, uh, Steady on here. Uh, I'm going to be doing a really quick tutorial on UI grid layout. Um, and what this really does is stuff like this. I'll just quickly show you. Um, you can do stuff like have an item page filled with items. Obviously, I don't actually have items here just for the sake of the tutorial. Um, and it's very easy to do. In the past, you would have had to do you would have had to use scripts to make this. I've just messed that up. Um, we would have had to use scripts to make this all uh, align properly, and scripts were very buggy doing this sort of thing because Lua isn't really. Uh, I don't really know what it is. I think it was something to do with Roblox's um, way of using GUIs. Um, but stuff would happen like they'd overlap, or one of them would miss out, so you'd have space here and stuff like that if you scripted it. But now you've got uh, UI grid layout. I almost forgot the name there. Um, you can do this, and this is very simple. So as you can see here, I've got just one frame. Uh, and in this frame, I've got all of these items. I can delete any of them, and it will automatically resize it uh, to shape the item. So it doesn't matter which one I delete, it will always just remove move it around so that it will fit. Um, and just one UI grid layout here. Uh, and you'll notice everything in the um, in the GUI object above UI grid layout, all of its children will be moved uh, by the UI grid layout. Um, and so, I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. So, here we go, we've got our shop GUI. Um, and we're going to make this GUI have some stuff in it. Um, now, a lot of people will say, well, a lot of people would uh, automatically say, okay, I'll put the UI grid constraint straight in the shop. Um, but say you had a title, like I now do, almost, um, then if you put your UI grid constraint in here, um, what's going to happen is, I mean, UI grid uh, layout, sorry, what's going to happen is, well, I've got a background on it, so not only has the t title moved, but so has the background. So you've got the title and the background in frames. So you want what you want to do is you want to create a frame inside of the frame. If you're creating a scrolling GUI, then you, you'll need to create a new frame anyway. So I'm going to make a scrolling one. It doesn't matter, you can use a normal frame, you do it in exactly the same way. Um, so I'm going to call it shop scroll, um, I'm going to make it the full size of the uh, frame. Um, I'm going to remove the background of this, uh, remove the border as well. All of this you can obviously do whatever you want with this. Um, right, so we've got a title here, um, and this will stay in the same place while we scroll. That's just the normal scroll GUI. Um, right, so now we're going to start creating our actual items. Um, now you could do something like an image button, anything you want, but I'm going to use frames. Um, I'm also going to make this slightly smaller because otherwise it will go uh, underneath the title, which I don't really want. Um, this down. There we go. Um, right, so here you go, we have a title. Um, I'm going to, for the sake of the tutorial, to keep it fast as possible, I'm going to put the background in here, uh, make the colour slightly darker, and remove the background on here. Um, now, I'm going to duplicate this a few times, and you'll notice nothing happens. So if I remove all these, and now I put a UI uh, grid layout in here, and then I duplicate them, you'll notice they go like that. I've also messed this up a bit because... Uh, I haven't removed the border, so it looks a bit weird. There we go. That looks nicer. Um, and I also need to remove the background on this. There. Right. So now we have a shop. But you'll notice that this is pressing against the side of the GUI, and there's a big space here, which we don't really want. Um, so what you're going to want to do to stop that uh, is very simple, actually. There's two things you could do. Firstly, you could resize the actual GUI here. So I'm going to make it slightly smaller. Um, and then just move it slightly to the side, like that. Um, and then you'll get something in the middle of the screen. Uh, the only problem here is your scroll button will be slightly there. Um, and also we've still got this big space. So alternatively what you can do um, is you can change either the size of these um, or uh, you go to your vertical alignment Click center. No, wait, not no, not the center. Um, I've messed this up. Uh, you go to one of these. Uh, here we go. Right, uh, left. So all this stuff does different things. Um, the horizontal and vertical. The vertical will make it go downwards, like uh, in order of uh, like this. So if I duplicate it, you'll notice it goes like that, um, which can be useful for shops. Uh, the the vertical, I mean, the, sorry, the horizontal will make it go sideways. I'll show you that again. 
Um, so if you just duplicate these, it'll go down like that. Um, it depends on your preference, really. It doesn't really matter. Um, actually, no, it does. It does matter. Because if you have a shop and it's only filled halfway like this, it's going to look a bit weird. So you're going to want to use, um, for shops, you're going to want to use horizontal fill direction. Um, okay. So you've got your GUI here. You've got all the items in here. Um, and you're just going to use, you can just use something like a for loop to detect clicks on these. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry. Um, yeah. That's basically the entire tutorial. Uh, it's very simple to do. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I haven't finished. Uh, the padding here, what this does is the first one is the space between the uh, bet between them from a uh, like uh, I don't know how to describe this. Well, you've, you've seen it here. So if I change this, obviously it makes this smaller. And the next one is probably you've already already realised is the same thing but the opposite direction then you've got the cell size so this will change the size of every single cell so if i do that it will make it every single one bigger like that um uh, or if i make it like this you know you've got loads of tiny ones um and i could make a huge thing of these probably would be very laggy if i actually was to do this in game um but you've got a whole thing here there's endless possible sorry <laughs> there's endless possibilities of stuff you could do with this um and what I personally use it for is shop GUIs, um, and it's very good for automatically generating a shop GUI. So if you're if you're someone who changes the, or your items in your game a lot, this is very useful because it means you can just put them in the thing and it will automatically put them in the right place. You don't have to do any scripting or anything like that. They'll automatically just be put in place. Like what I mean is, if I just uh, I don't know took some random ones here, uh, and then I just put them back in again, they will be put in place immediately. Um, yeah, so that's the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, um, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, and leave a like, share this with your friends. Uh, I don't really know why you share it with your friends. Share it with your friends if you're a developer and you have developer friends. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I've been sending on. Bye.